Now that your sellers are well defended following last week's seller defender video, it's time to identify five coveted collectible wines that you can add to your collection. But before I get into the selections, a quick word about the state of the market for collectible wines. In many of my wine collecting videos, I've mentioned that it's oftentimes a better idea and more cost effective to buy back vintages of wine in the secondary market rather than to buy new releases. Currently, however, that's not necessarily the case. And in fact, the market for collectible wine, particularly older vintages of top wine, is at an all-time high. I've even had auction houses sending me unsolicited emails trying to get me to sell them wines from my collection. As a result, now I think the smart money is to take it a little bit easy with respect to the older vintages that are in the collectible market, and instead strategically pick off certain wines that represent outstanding value on new release wines. And so that was the catalyst for this video, and I've got five outstanding new release wines for you to consider today. We're going to start things off strong with a double 100 point Bordeaux. And you'll be both surprised and pleased to know that neither one of these perfect scores comes from Mr. Suckling. We're talking about the 2020 Chateau Le Carme Haute Brion. This property is located in Pesac Leonion, not far from La Mission Haute Brion and Haute Brion. This producer has around 30 hectares of vines, but only about 7.5 hectares are used to make this top wine. There was new ownership back in 2010, and those new owners have done a complete overhaul of the winemaking facilities in the cellar, and this producer has been making some of their best wines in its history since about 2014 or so. Cabernet Franc actually does surprisingly well here because there's a high percentage of limestone and gravel soils, and so this wine has around 40% Cabernet Franc. It also has around 34% Cabernet Sauvignon and 26% Merlot. Interestingly, they use about 55% whole cluster fermentation for this wine. That's a bit unusual for Bordeaux, and it's something that's definitely more commonly done with grapes like Pinot or Gamay. But here they're doing it with Bordeaux to try to improve the freshness of the wine. To add some complexity to this wine, this producer also uses a variety of maturation vessels, including new French oak barriques, large neutral oak foudre, and some amphora. This is a wine that should cruise in your cellar for decades, and I would recommend not touching it for about seven to eight years. It's an extraordinary value, and if you shop around, you should be able to find it for around $165 or so. If you're tempted to buy some back vintages, again, I definitely wouldn't go back any further than 2014 or so, as this producer's best wines have been in the past six or seven vintages or so. In 1995, winemaker Benjamin Romeo acquired a cave in the Sierra Cantabria Mountains in La Rioja Alta. A year later, he made his very first vintage of La Cueva del Contador in his father's garage. In the years to follow, Benjamin continued to buy additional vineyard sources and to make wine. Before long, Benjamin received critical international acclaim when his 2004 vintage of Contador Cuvée received a perfect 100-point score. Benjamin is a highly regarded producer of Spanish wines, and he has a well-deserved reputation as being meticulous in his winemaking. Indeed, he even travels to France personally to select the oak from the forest that will be used for his oak barrels, and he goes to the mountains in Spain to select the cork that is used for the corks for his wines. Benjamin's wines are typically fairly fruit-forward and made in more of a New World style, they can oftentimes resemble Ribera del Duero wines much more than they do wines from Rioja. Benjamin Romeo's wines can be quite expensive. However, I was able to locate the 2020 Benjamin Romeo Alma Contador for as little as $100 in the United States, so it should be even less than that in Europe. This is a wine that's a blend of fruit from three different vineyard sources that are at different altitudes. It's 92% Tempranillo and around 8% Garnacha. It spent 20 months maturing in 100% new French oak, and it comes in at around 14.5% ABV. While many of Benjamin's wines require a few years of additional bottle age to enjoy, because they can be quite structured and tannic, this wine is a little bit more approachable, and so you could even enjoy it young with a healthy decant and some food, but it certainly will be better if you can keep your hands off it for a few years. But this is definitely a very exciting wine, and if you haven't tried one of Benjamin's wines yet, I think that this is an excellent candidate for your cellar. 
as many viewers of this channel know, I've been recommending the 2016 Brunello di Montalcino wines for a long time on this channel. Many of those wines are largely sold out of the retail channels. However, the 2016 Brunello di Montalcino Reservas are still in the market and were just recently released. And so my next collectible wine category is the 2016 Brunello di Montalcino Reservas. The Reservas are more expensive than the standard Brunello di Montalcino, both because they have an additional year of aging before they're released and because they typically come from the producer's best vineyards. As such, the Brunello di Montalcino Reservas tend to be the highest expression of Brunello from each producer and definitely the most age-worthy and collectible examples. Which particular producers do I recommend? Well, you really can't go wrong here as 2016 was such an outstanding vintage that you should be able to pick any of the Reservas from your favorite producers. I tend to really enjoy the Biondi Santi Brunello di Montalcino Reserva. I had that one a few months ago and it was outstanding. But again, the 2016 vintage was so strong in Montalcino, you can pretty much buy with confidence almost any 2016 Brunello di Montalcino Reserva that you come across or that comes from a producer that you've enjoyed in the past. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. The next top collectible wine comes from Bordeaux's right bank, specifically from saint Emilion. And if the first Bordeaux that I mentioned in this video was a little bit too expensive, then this one may be for you, as I found this one selling for right around $110 or so. This one also received a 100-point score from a critic other than Mr. Suckling, and so it's definitely a highly regarded wine. I'm talking about the 2020 Chateau Trollon Mondo. This is a wine that's 85% Merlot, 13% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 2% Cabernet Franc. But don't let the high percentage of Merlot fool you, however. This is a powerful, concentrated, structured wine with fine-grained tannins. This is a wine that has some intriguing minerality as well. It's definitely a wine that needs a minimum of an additional five years before you dig in. Ideally, you'd wait at least another eight or nine years or so. But it's definitely going to be an exceptional wine, and it's a phenomenal value at a little more than $100 per bottle. If you're tempted to dig into some back vintages from this producer, I would consider maybe the 89 and 90 vintages as those were pretty strong and are in a great place right now. But other than that, I would probably skip everything other than from 2000 to the present. And then I would also eliminate off vintages such as 2007, 2011, 2013, and so forth. The next top collectible wine is the Dunn Hull Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon. And in particular, I'm recommending the 2019 vintage which will be coming out in October of 2023. Founded by Randy Dunn, Dunn Vineyards produced its first vintage back in 1979. Randy is still in charge of the vineyards, but his son Mike Dunn has taken over the winemaking duties. While Mike continues to make wine in much the same way that his father did, he made one important change to the maturation program. And in particular, while they still use 100% new French oak to mature the wines, Mike changed the program and now purchases oak barrels from a number of different producers rather than just one. The result is that the wines are much more approachable in their youth than they used to be, and so you no longer need to age this wine for decades before you start enjoying it. While it is still a very structured wine, it's definitely far more approachable earlier on than it was in the past. I recently tasted the 2018 and the not yet released 2019 vintage at the winery, and both were surprisingly approachable, although they will certainly benefit from some additional bottle age. The family, for example, advised that they typically enjoy the wines with 8 to 12 years on them. The Dunhill Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon is produced from exclusively estate-grown fruit that is farmed by the Duns from the Hull Mountain AVA. This wine spends an impressive 32 months in new French oak before it's released. While I was at the winery, the word came down from a very well-known critic that he was giving this wine a 98-point score and again, this is not a critic that's known for handing out high grades very easily. So this is definitely going to be a highly acclaimed and well-received wine, and definitely one that you want to put on your radar for fall when it's released. 
My recommendation would be to get it direct from the winery, and to do that, the best way is to get on their mailing list. In that way, as soon as they announce the release of this wine, you'll be able to get it directly from the winery. I also note that Dunn has some library wines as well, and so if you sign up for their mailing list and you're interested in acquiring some older vintages of Dunn wines, you may want to ask them about those older vintages as well. And if you're interested in more collectible wines, please be sure to check out the video in the pinned comment below.